In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a frame around your map and add tick marks to denote a longitude and latitude graticule. You'll also learn how to crop features of your map that run beyond the edge of this frame using something called clipping masks. So to start with, I'm going to make a new layer, and we're going to call this frame. And then I'm just going to come grab the rectangle tool and draw a frame around the center of our map. If we zoom in here, we take a look at the frame, and it'll open up the appearance panel. You can see it's just a simple two-point frame. And I'm going to show you how to make uh, the same sort of double-lined frame that uh, you've been looking at on some of the historical maps. Um, this is not something that you'd want to use, I think, on a, uh, a, on a more modern style map, but it does uh, help sort of pop the map out uh, in, in a similar way to some of the offsetting that we've used in the lake. Uh, it gives it sort of a, a traditional appearance. So to make that double line style, the first thing I'm going to do is add a second stroke to this frame. And we're going to do this, use the same technique that we did for the offsetting in the lake. Uh, we'll make this stroke a bit smaller, 0.5 points, and then come up to effect and path and offset path. And we'll just offset it by negative two points. You can see it's going to create that offset right there. Now the problem is, is that you can still see the area between those two strokes. And we'd really like that to be white in this case uh, so that the frame acts as sort of a single unified object. And so the next thing we're going to do is add yet a third stroke and drag it down to the bottom of the, both of those. So it will be the first thing that's drawn in that list of strokes. We're going to make that stroke white. So if I select it here and go up to the color panel there and just select white as the color, you won't see any change right, right off yet. And then if I click on stroke right there, it'll open up some stroke options. And I want to select uh, this option that aligns the stroke to the inside of the frame. So it'll start drawing the stroke at that green line and it will draw it into the frame. So I'll hit that. And you can see that now if we were to increase the width of that stroke, it would start sort of pushing that white line into the interior of the frame. I think it worked out just fine for it to be just two points in width, and you can see that it's covered up the, the lines beneath it in that space between the thick line and the thin line. So that's our frame right there. Uh, that's all, all set and done. So the next thing we're going to do is draw some graticule marks uh, to show where lines of longitude and latitude pass over that frame. Um, this can be a little bit tricky, and it's easier with a GIS if you can sort of bring those marks in right at the beginning of your project. I did just a little bit of research uh, on Google Earth and used some, uh, some guides to mark out where lines of longitude and latitude at, uh, at 30, sec 30 minute, excuse me, 30 minute grids were on this frame. So that's what these guides denote. And they're rough, but they're good enough for this scale of map uh, and, and the purposes here. So to begin with, I'm going to, again, make a new layer. And we'll call this Graticule. And then I'm going to come down to this bottom left corner. And um, I'm going to move the Graticule layer down below the frame because when I grab the pen tool and just make my first tick mark here, you can see that I've got those two ends, but this line doesn't have any stroke. So I'll have to come over to the stroke panel. Oh, it does. It's just, it's white. So let's change that to black. And there you can see that this tick mark is drawn below the frame because we moved the graticule layer down to below the frame layer. And so it starts on the inside of, of that double line, which I like. Now that line is a bit dark, and so I'm going to lock the graticule grid just so that I don't edit it by mistake. Select that line, and probably change it to just be one point, or even a half a point in size. And now all I'm going to do is copy that line, and then paste it. But I'm going to paste in sort of a special way. I'm going to paste in front, which means that if I were to just click the paste button here, it would put that line sort of out in the middle of nowhere. And it would be difficult to line that back up uh, in space with this line right there. If I paste in front, then it will paste it right in the same place as the line that I had just copied. And it will be right above it in the layer hierarchy. So there it is.
Now, if I hold shift while I move that line, or I'll select it, and then hold shift, I can move my cursor up and down, but that line will stay locked to that horizontal as it moves across. So I can make sure that it's lined right up with the earlier line. And I'm going to paste in front again by pressing on my keyboard control F and that will put yet a third line right there I can hold shift drag it across line it up with the guide and there I am I'll do the same thing for the top this time I can just paste somewhere out in the middle I did control V and now I can sort of put that mark right there line it up roughly with the uh, I think that was about where uh, the other one was on the bottom. And then I can paste in front, drag it across, zoom out a little bit. Whoops. I want to make sure my other layers are locked. There we go. And paste in front again. You can do the same thing with the uh, with the lines of latitude and then you can label them using text boxes. So I'll go ahead and turn off the Graticule grid and there you can see that we've got little tick marks. So lastly here I'm going to show you how to use clipping masks in order to end the map at the edge of this frame boundary. You can see that the, both the lake and the river extend beyond the frame and we'd rather that they'd cut off at that frame edge. So we're going to have to use a clipping mask for both the lake and the river separately but it shouldn't be too big a deal to draw two. Let's start with the lake. I'll unlock the layer and you can see that I've got this group of compound paths. I don't really care that it's in a group and it's going to make it a little bit easier on me if they're not in the group um, just in terms of keeping it organized. So I'm going to select all of those, drag them out from under the group and now I've just got them in this layer themselves. The next thing I'm going to do is come up to view and turn on smart guides. <clears throat> and what that's going to allow me to do is when I come over and grab, I'm in the Lake Champlain layer, when I grab this rectangle tool I'm going to be able to snap it right to the vertex of that frame that I just made. So I know that it's lined up exactly with it and the same on the opposite corner. Now I've got this new rectangular path in this layer and it's important that it's the topmost object in that layer because when I go to make a clipping path it's going to, or a clipping mask, the terms are synonymous, it's going to use the topmost object in the layer as the mask. So now all I have to do is select all of these objects by selecting the whole Lake Champlain layer and come up to Object, Clipping Mask, and Make. And it will automatically put all these objects in a group and use that rectangle, which was the topmost layer in that selection, sorry, the topmost object in that selection. And it will use that as a clipping mask to clip the extent of everything below it. Let's try that now again with the rivers. So I'm going to unlock the Vermont rivers. I'm going to select that layer, make a new rectangle, snap it directly to that frame, select all the objects, making sure that that rectangle I just drew is the topmost object in that selection. Come over to Object, Clipping Mask, and Make. And now those rivers are cut off at the edge of our map. We've got a nice frame around it. We've got some graticule marks. We'll put some more in where that graticule grid intersects for lines of latitude. And then we'll have a very nice looking map. Lastly, I'm just going to show you how to change the boundaries of the artboard so that it matches the new frame that you've set up for your map. So over here on the left is something called the artboard tool. And if you click that, the artboard becomes, uh, becomes selected so that you can actually change the size of the artboard. And right now, since we have these smart uh, guides turned on, we can snap the corner of that artboard right to the frame that we've just drawn. I'm actually going to make the artboard just a little bit larger than that frame so that we make sure we get all of it in there. We'll change it on the other corner. And there we go. Now we've changed our artboard so that it's the same size as the frame of our map.